So guys, before we move on to the syndromes of the brainstem, uh, first we need to have all four lemoniscus in hand. Uh, we already talked about the medial and the spinal lemoniscus in the tracts of the spinal cord. We need two more. One is the uh, lateral lemoniscus, which we'll discuss in the auditory pathway. And then there is a trigeminal lemoniscus. We're going to talk about that in the trigeminal thalamic pathway. So let's start with this. And once we have all the four lemoniscus in hand, then we can move on to the syndrome part. So let's look into the auditory pathway. Now, how this auditory pathway is going to be different from the other pathways we've discussed? Well, till now, whatever tracts, ascending tracts or sensory pathway we saw, they were having usually three order neuron system. The dorsal root ganglia was forming the first order, second was in many a cases decusating, reaching the thalamus and the third order to the cortex. Auditory pathway is one which is having four order neuron system. So, although when you look at the uh, pathway it begins from the ear and goes into the brain so that it doesn't have to travel a distance like the tracks from the spinal cord does but still the number of order neurons are more in case of auditory pathway so first we're going to draw the plot for the auditory pathway and then we'll see that where those order neurons are highest center for the auditory pathway will be the auditory cortex or the primary auditory cortex i should call it this is auditory cortex where is auditory cortex located? It is in the temporal lobe. It is present in the temporal lobe. That is area number 41 and 42. And this uh, auditory cortex is also called as the Hessel's cortex. There is another name given to this. This is also called as the Hessel's cortex. Auditory cortex is also called as the Hessel's cortex. Area number 41 and 42. In the temporal lobe, we will see exactly where it is in the temporal lobe when we will talk about the cerebrum. Now, for whatever pathway we discussed till now, thalamus was the relay center. Whether it is pain, temperature, touch, pressure, everything was coming into thalamus and then radiating into the cortex. For auditory and visual pathway, it is not thalamus, it is the metathalamus which is a relay center. And when you say metathalamus, we are talking about the medial geniculate body and lateral geniculate body. Now, to remember that which geniculate body is for the auditory pathway and which one is for the visual pathway, a simple trick we can, we can remember. Uh, let's say if I write like this, this is the, the two geniculate body. You will see the two geniculate body present behind the thalamus, guys. We will discuss it later. But let's say if this is thalamus. So, behind the thalamus, we will be looking at the medial geniculate body and there will be a lateral geniculate body. Now, when you look at the medial and lateral, just think of M and L. M for medial geniculate and M will remind you of music. L for lateral geniculate body and L will remind you of light. Light and music. So, it's quite clear that medial geniculate body is related to the auditory pathway. Music will remind you of the auditory pathway and light will remind you of the visual pathway. Music and light. So, when we'll look into the visual pathway, the opti optic uh, chiasma, the optic tract will go backward and that will have a relay in the lateral geniculate body and then into the visual cortex. Auditory pathway after decusation will come into medial geniculate body and then into auditory cortex. So, this is the geniculate body of concern for this tract. So, coming back to the pathway we're discussing. So, we don't need thalamus here. We need metathalamus and what part of metathalamus? That is the medial geniculate body. Now the question is, medial geniculate body will be receiving the fiber from which part of the brain stem? Well, midbrain. Midbrain section can be taken at the level of superior colliculus and inferior colliculus. And you should remember that superior colliculus is connected to the lateral geniculate body and inferior colliculus is connected to medial geniculate body. So it is inferior colliculus. This is inferior colliculus of midbrain. This is inferior colliculus of midbrain, which will be seen connected to the medial geniculate body by a white matter bundle. It is connected to the medial geniculate body by a white matter bundle. This white matter bundle can be called as an inferior brachium. Now, again, let me tell you something uh, separately. Again, we said medial and lateral geniculate body, when you look at these, 
Guys, if this was the midbrain, just drawing it very roughly, here was the two superior colliculus, two inferior colliculus. The superior colliculus and that is inferior colliculus. And somewhere above, let's say we got the geniculate bodies here. If uh, for the convenience, if I said this is the lateral geniculate and this is a medial geniculate body. So what you'll see a white matter bundle is connecting the inferior colliculus to medial geniculate. And a white matter bundle will connect the superior colliculus to lateral geniculate body. And that is to be seen on both the side. Same story. So when auditory pathway will be coming from below like this in the brain stem to the inferior colliculus. To the inferior colliculus. So it can use this brachium and reach the medial geniculate body. And from there it can go into the cortex. So that's a connection. That's a connection band. These white matter bundles are the connecting link between the midbrain and metathalamus. Superior colliculus is above, so it is connected to lateral geniculate body by the brachium which is also called a superior brachium. It is above, so we call it superior brachium. Inferior colliculus is below, so it is connected to medial geniculate body by what brachium? Inferior brachium. And that's what we just said, that this brachium here, this brachium here which is connecting, if I just mark it and write it separately somewhere, connecting the inferior colliculus of midbrain to the medial geniculate body, that is the inferior brachium. Breaking just a white matter bundle only, nothing special. It's a white matter bundle connecting the medial geniculate body and inferior colliculus. Considering this as a midbrain, uh, midline of the brainstem, look at this. This is a midline of the brainstem. So we already said inferior colliculus. So that, that means we are in midbrain. Let's come below the midbrain in the pons. And there is a nucleus present in the pons which has relation to the auditory pathway. And we call it superior olivary nucleus. This nucleus is called a superior olivary nucleus. The situation is in pons. Superior olivary nucleus. Remember, inferior olivary nucleus was forming olive. Olive was a part of medulla oblongata. This is superior olivary nucleus, which is in pons. Inferior is in medulla. Superior olivary nucleus is in pons. Another component that we require for the uh, auditory pathway. Now see, guys, this was what midbrain. This here is pons. Let's go below. We'll go to the medulla. So we're going downward toward the medulla. At ponto medullary junction, at ponto medullary junction on the contralateral side, I'm drawing these cochlear nuclei. Obviously, we're talking about the auditory pathway. So we need cochlear nuclei. And these cochlear nuclei are situated at ponto, close to ponto medullary junction. Something we discussed in the cranial nerve nuclei and column also. Vestibular cochlear, if you remember, vestibular cochlear nucleus were in the last column, SSA, special somatic afferent. And the situation of vestibular cochlear nucleus is more or less at the pontomedullary junction. Now, the question is where auditory pathway will begin from. Now, these are the components we are talking about, but where exactly it will start from? It will start from the internal ear. We all know in the internal ear, we have organ of corte, which is having hair cell, inner hair cell and the outer hair cell. So, let me just... So let's say these are the inner and the outer hair cell. Just, just drawing it. Inner hair cells. And we also have outer hair cells. Situated in the organ of corte. In the internal ear. in the internal ear. So this is the point from where the auditory pathway will begin. But will it start mainly from the inner hair cell or outer hair cell? The, the first order afferent pathway of the auditory, uh, the first order, uh, this afferent neuron of the auditory pathway will start from which hair cell? Well, they predominantly will start from the inner hair cell. From the inner hair cells. 95% fiber will come from the inner hair cell and only 5% fibers will come from the outer hair cell. 95% fibers will start from inner hair cell and only 5% fiber will start from the outer hair cell. So what is that first order neuron which is predominantly starting from inner hair cell? That is the peripheral process and the central process of this neuron which is connecting the inner hair cell to the cochlear nucleus of the same side of course. And this ganglion that I just drew, that this ganglion is situated in the wall of cochlea. As wall of cochlea, what is the shape of wall of cochlea? It's a spiral shaped. 
and that's why it is also called as a spiral ganglion it is present in the wall of cochlea and that's why it is called a spiral ganglion and this is the first order neuron for the auditory pathway i'll keep highlighting these order neuron that's a spiral ganglion which is basically the component of eighth nerve only is the first order neuron of auditory pathway how spiral ganglion is different from the other first order neuron we discussed uh, in the spinal cord they were dorsal root ganglia dorsal root ganglia were pseudo unipolar the fiber comes in from the same pole and exit from the same pole so that was a pseudo unipolar this is not pseudo unipolar this is bipolar you can see from both the end we have a one is a peri uh, this is a, a peripheral process and there is a central process going towards the central nervous system so it's a bipolar neuron spiral ganglion and they are the one forming the first order neuron cochlear nucleus this is a point from where the second order neuron will begin and as you know the property if the decussation has to take place it is by the second order neuron so that is what is happening here second order neuron starting from the cochlear nucleus will decussate to the other side and reach the superior olivary nucleus so these decussating second order neuron from the right to left and left to right side they decussate in such a way that in the pons in the middle part of the pons they form a shape like a trapezium and that's why it is called as trapezoid body we call it trapezoid body the second order neuron neurons only so the, the, don't conf get confused with the word body here trapezoid body are the second order neuron which starts from cochlear nucleus crosses the midline and goes to the superior olivary nucleus of the other side so these decussating neuron in the pons they form a trapezium over there and we simply call it a trapezoid body from superior olivary nucleus guys third order neuron will begin and this third order neuron will ascend upward reach the inferior colliculus yes it gives few collateral to inferior colliculus because inferior colliculus is related is is uh, having a relation to the auditory reflexes so yes few fibers will relate to inferior colliculus but majority of the fibers will continue their journey through inferior brachium and end in medial geniculate body i repeat again what i said third order neuron starts from superior olivary nucleus ascend reaches inferior colliculus few will relay in the inferior colliculus and have a relation for the auditory reflexes but majority of the fibers using the inferior brachium reach the medial geniculate body now i hope you can think about what this should be called as i told you once the tract reaches the opposite side and present in the brain stem we call it lemniscus it is again reaching the other side and in the brain stem it is lemniscus so this third order neuron is called as the lateral lemniscus this is what we were waiting for lateral lemniscus is the third order neuron here first order is spiral ganglion second is trapezoid body third order is lateral lemniscus which is obviously on the contralateral side i told you lemniscus are all on the contralateral side that's why injury to lemniscus effect is always contralateral and finally fourth order neuron which will begin from this medial geniculate body will be radiating into the auditory cortex or hessel's cortex and that's why it is called as the auditory radiation we call it auditory radiations that is the fourth order neuron that is a fourth order neuron the auditory radiation see there is another name given to the auditory radiation and what is that auditory radiation i mean this is a schematic diagram so it looks like they are going superiorly in the temporal lobe but no when you compare the medial geniculate body and this auditory cortex auditory cortex is below geniculate medial geniculate body is above and auditory cortex is lower than that in actual so the fibers once they reach the medial geniculate body they have to come in the downward direction to reach the temporal lobe and that's why based on this direction we can also call auditory radiation as inferior thalamic radiation inferior because they have to come down toward the temporal lobe and why word thalamic because geniculate body are the part of metathalamus so the word thalamic can be there it's a part of met medial and lateral geniculate body uh, developmentally or you can say from the evolutionary history point of view they are considered as detached part of thalamus only medial and lateral geniculate body they are in a way a detached part of thalamus we call it metathalamus so any radiation or any fibers coming out from there can also be called as thalamic radiation and based on the direction coming downward we can call them inferior thalamic radiation so this auditory radiation 
can also be called as inferior thalamic radiation. You should know all these alternative names so that you don't get confused in the questions. Inferior thalamic radiations. And, and if you uh, keep the same concept in mind, what will be the name? What will be the other name for the uh, optic radiations or visual radiations? Now, optic radiations will come from the uh, lateral genital body. And where is the visual cortex? Visual cortex is at the back, occipital lobe. So they have to go in the backward direction, in the posterior direction. And that's why optic radiation is also called as posterior thalamic radiation. Inferior thalamic radiation is another name for auditory radiation. Posterior thalamic radiation is a name for the optic radiation. Optic radiation. Well, all in all, in this auditory court pathway, there are few important things to note that first of all, we got four order neuron system here. Spiral ganglion, trapezoid body, lateral lemniscus and auditory radiation. This is a, I told you in the pathway, it's a very uh, popular and common question nowadays to ask that uh, they give you the randomly any four option and will ask you that arrange this pathway in a sequence. So you should know this auditory or visual or any other ascending or descending pathway based on this component that from peripheral to central and from central to peripheral. So you cannot miss any of these component. Well, another question which is asked from uh, from the same topic only was about that which nucleus is the center for stapedial reflex? Center for stapedial reflex. Now, for the stapedial reflex also, the afferent fiber are the same only the spiral ganglion will carry the sensation to cochlear nucleus and via trapezoid body into superior olivary nucleus. Now, if you go above the superior olivary nucleus, then you're going toward the higher center. Guys, when you think of stapedial reflex, we all know that stapedius muscle is supplied by facial nerve and motor nucleus of facial nerve is in pons only. So it makes sense to have a center for stapedial reflex in pons so that the reflex can be fast. That's, that's what the target is. We always want the sensory and motor nucleus close to each other so that the reflex could be fast. That's why from this superior olivary nucleus, you will see fibers projecting to the facial nucleus, which is in pons only. And then obviously the facial nerve will come out and we know that facial nerve is going to supply the stapedius muscle. It's going to supply the stapedius muscle. So please note that if the question says, what is the center for stapedial reflex? Your answer will be superior olivary nucleus or you can say superior olivary complex, they also call it. That's the point where the afferent goes in and that's how the efferent comes out. And again, this the nucleus which receives the afferent and the nucleus which gives the efferent, they are close to each other, both are in pause. That makes sense. If you have in a different part of the brainstem, the reflex will be slower. So superior olivary nucleus is in the pons, facial nucleus also in the pons. And that's why superior olivary nucleus is called as the center of stapedial reflex. Please note that superior olivary nucleus in the pons is the center for stapedial reflex. So with that, now we have three lemniscus in our hand. We have a medial lemniscus and spinal lemniscus we discussed in the spinal cord. And now the lateral lemniscus that we understood here in the auditory pathway.